Now there are some big wins to be had with the San Remo all ground grinder. Aside from the very colorful range you do get to choose from, this also matching the San Remo cube machines, to which I adore. I'll say this now, this is a Fiorenzato grinder with a San Remo badge on it, all except the colors which San Remo have done a great job at jazzing up. And this is an all purpose grinder, meaning it'll do espresso, but equally grind well for filter style coffee too. And it even comes with a handy dosing container for when you're grinding out larger amounts of beans. Now this grinder is well designed and robustly built, and I would highly consider it to be put to good use as a secondary grinder within a commercial cafe setting, say if you're running a different blend, an origin or decaf beans. And the features it has do well to offer the home consumer a grinder that is close to comparable to those other Titans within the same price bracket for a home grinder. You know the ones I'm talking about, the Niche Zero, the Eureka Oro, and the DF64. So let's now go over the specs of the all ground, check out its capabilities, and see how it fits in with all its features. So the hopper holds a maximum of 500 grams of beans, and the capacity of grinding is at about one kilogram a day. So that's two full hoppers for ease of tracking within a cafe. But at home, you may or may not want to be keeping a full hopper. It does have a hopper shut off gate, and certainly as single dosing becoming popular, this grinder will single dose your beans. But with some more unique features to this grinder, you do have to slightly adjust your workflow depending on what brew method you're grinding for. Let me explain. The grind adjustment ring, which is superb, really easy to adjust. It's stepped but feels stepless, and each of the settings is marked out clearly with ranges for different brewing methods, and the analog display links up seamlessly down to the digital display down below. But with three distinct ranges on the grinder's dial, espresso, mocha, and filter, there are three separate ways to dose your coffee out through the digital display. And these can't be overridden nor shared between the ranges. And this is an interesting design choice for UI, having them separated in the first place. Now, it won't mean all that much to you, I guess, if you are just filling the hopper full of beans and then dosing out for one brew method. But if you are using this grinder as a multi-purpose grinder, then you're more likely to be single dosing your beans. So to grind out for espresso, you have the choice of two timed by dose buttons. Each of these is programmable to a tenth of a second. And then there is your manual purge, which you hold for it to grind and then you release it to stop. Now, if you're single dosing your beans with this grinder, for espresso, you have that choice of either adjusting the grinder's time beyond that to grind a full dose. Let's just call this 15 seconds to grind for 20 grams, or you can continue to hold that purge button to grind your full dose out. Now for mocha pot grind settings, you have just that same purge button as you did with the espresso. So you continue to hold that grind button until the full dose is ground out. And then found within the filter grind settings, you're given the same purge button, but this time it's a press to start the grinding, and then it will automatically grind until you press it to stop again. Now for personal preferences, it would be nice to see that press to start, press to stop button found in the filter grind settings be shared across to the mocha and the espresso grind settings as well, as single dosing just becomes so much easier with that style of function of grinding out. And I'm saying all of this because I do strongly believe that the all ground grinder would make a great single dosing grinder. Looking beyond that and the hopper, after placing just a single 20 gram dose through this grinder after a good deep clean and then losing an initial 1.5 grams to its chamber, the retention, and this is what's important to single dosing, to every other 20 gram dose since then has been on the money and out by no more than say 0.2, maybe 0.3 grams max. And the all ground uses its own 64 millimeter titanium coated multi-purpose burr set. These essentially are double the lifespan of a standard set of burrs and will grind up to 1.4 tons of coffee. So they're gonna last a while. The rest, pretty standard, a motor that's 250 watts, spinning at around 1400 to 1600 RPMs. And it grinds out at around 1.7 to two grams a second for espresso. 
Taking a look at the grinding performance of the all ground, there is no question it has a great espresso range. And even as it gets coarser and coarser into the mocha pot settings, the grinds present quite clean and well distributed. And the only perceived issue might be its maximum coarseness. This is fixed, and it's possibly a little bit finer than I would use for cold brew, but for every other brew method, it would be just fine. No pun intended. Now the cradle options are an adjustable cradle for spouted or naked porter filters, and this is a hands-free grinder. I've also been able to add a dosing ring to the filter basket whilst grinding, but it isn't absolutely necessary as it is quite clean grinding out for espresso. Now a dosing cup will fit onto the forks if you're single dosing this way, but for other brewing methods without a dosing cup, the all ground comes along with a fully enclosed dosing chamber. And this comes in very handy with larger batch brew volumes where the dosing chamber holds a neat 80 grams and it can be used quite efficiently to transfer your grounds into a filter basket. So cleaning this grinder is really quite neat. So after turning the grinder off and removing the hopper, adjust the grind dial all the way coarse until the arrow almost meets the red dot. And then with a the press of the button just to the right of this, that grind adjustment ring pops off. And the top burr carrier then is easily removed and then you have full access to the burr chamber with no tools required. And with a quick vacuum out and a brush off of the burrs, replace everything back together in the same way and you'll be good to go again. Additionally, down in front is the simple removal of the grind chute. This is magnetically attached, and in this way you can keep the whole grinding path clean and free of any dust or grind building up. And it's a beautiful looking grinder with features that can support many brewing options, workflows, and the obvious matching it to the machine, your decor, or the look of your cafe. So if you have any further questions on the San Remo all ground, throw them in the comments section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Thanks for watching to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one.